Welcome to the Old Time Radio Superman Show. This is your host, Adam Graham. Um, I'm hoping people will be able to hear this live. Uh, we've had some issues on Talk Show the re- uh, recent days with shows posting as well as shows um, uh, getting successfully uh, added. So I apologize in advance if your episode and your listening experience is at all delayed. Uh, it's something we uh, definitely don't want to see happen. Uh, I do encourage you to check out um, our magazine, um, Laser, so- uh, Laser and Sword, lasersword.adamsweb.us. Uh, we created some very nice uh, characters and storylines uh, in the in the same vein as uh, uh, as this series. They are uh, they are serial fiction, and it's it's that same type of spirit. We've uh, we had a, I had a lot of fun writing these, and I think you'll have a lot of fun reading them. I'm very confident that you will uh, enjoy those stories. That's why you can actually download the first issue at no charge. Uh, just go to lasersword.adamsweb.us, or you can also uh, search for us um, over at uh, lulu.com. Just put in laser and sword, and you can find the issue. Get the electronic download version for free. Uh, and you can also, if you want, want you can purchase uh, copies, uh, actual physical copies, uh, for an additional cost. But I encourage you to check it out so we can work to revive uh, this uh, uh, lost art of serial fiction. So please check that out today. All right. Well, let's go ahead and we will get started. Uh, as we left, the uh, yellow mask had gotten the fuel he needed for the, uh, uh, for the beam machine. And now he's headed towards the planet, and we're going to see if Superman is going to be able to intercept in time. So, here we go, Adventures of Superman. Presenting Superman. Up in the sky, look, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. And now, Superman. Strange and amazing figure from another world who has come to Earth as the champion of the weak and the oppressed. As our story opens today, Superman, in his character of Clark Kent, reporter, is just where we left him, in the laboratory of Dr. Dahlgren, bending over the reviving form of the scientist who has been stunned by the blowing open of his safe. Outside, a distant clock has just struck 5.30. Inside, Kent and the doctor stare at the empty safe. Realizing that the steel cylinders necessary to operate the Dahlgren atomic beam have been stolen, and that the yellow mask can now make good his threat to blow the Daily Planet building to fragments on the dot of six. Locust Lane has been sent to bring the police and warn the paper. Sirens wail as squad cars race toward the scene of the explosion. Meanwhile, the yellow mask himself watches grimly from a secret hiding place, waiting for the uproar to die down. Listen. So the sound of the explosion has brought the police like bees to a honeypot. Very well, I shall wait until I am ready to leave, and then all of the police in the city will not stop me. Are both cars waiting? Are ready when you give the word, Chief. Good. Who's this, Michael? Who's that with you? I got a visitor for you, Chief. You let me go. Put me down. That girl, where did she come from? She belongs to the fellow from the newspaper. After the explosion, she went for the cops. I seen her coming down the stairs, and I thought maybe we'd better hang on to her. Oh, you beast! Let me go! Excellent, Michael. Well done indeed. Put her in the second car with the machine. I won't go. Bring her to the airport, Michael. Put her in the plane. You heard what he said. Come along. Take it, Joe. I won't. Stop! Put me down! Well, you do with it, Chief. That young man Kent has annoyed us before. I shall take no chances this time. If he hinders my plans in the next half hour, he signs this girl's death warrant. Start up the car. And meanwhile, back in the laboratory of Dr. Dahlgren... Oh, Kent, how did they know... Who told them when to come? To steal the cylinders? Yes. Uh, Dr. Dahlgren, you remember I asked you if there was anyone named Michael hereabouts? Yes, my servant. I've had him for years. Well, Michael betrayed you to the yellow mask. He had a dictaphone in every room of the laboratory and told them of every move you made. Michael did that? 
Where is he? I don't know. Probably following the mask. And that's where I'm going, too. No, Ken, don't leave me. Come back. Doctor, you'll be all right. The police are on the stairs right now. Sorry, I can't wait. Hey, what goes on in here? Where's the turbo? I can't go down. It's got to be up. Maybe the next landing. Uh, this'll do it. Out of these clothes. <sighs> up for the window. What's the time? Where's that clock? Good thing I can see in the dark. 25 minutes to 6. 25 minutes to find the yellow mask or else... I don't know. Not much time, but here we go. Up! Up! One of two things. He's either going back to town or out to an airport. But first, I must warn White to clear the building just in case. Faster! Faster! 25 minutes! What are the six? Oh, Lord, Lord. Where is Miss Lane? Where's Kent? City Rome, White. My friend, this is the yellow mask. Mike, Miss Smith, trace this call. Don't trouble yourself, Mr. White. You cannot stop me now. Nor can Mr. Clark Kent. If he is there, tell him that Miss Lois Lane is with me. What? Lois Lane? You've got Lois? Miss Lane is my hostage in my plane. If you or Kent or anyone else interferes with me now, Miss Lane will leave my company without a parachute. Goodbye. Yes, Mr. White, we're tracing the call. I will let you know where. Oh, no time. Oh, Lord, that devil means to drop Lois out of an airplane. Oh, Kent, is that you? Where have you been, Matt? Never where mind have you been? where I've been, Mr. White. Is Miss Lane here? Kent, just this second, a call came from the mask. He's got an airplane, and he's got Lois. What? It's true. Uh, what did you find out at Dalton's? Mr. White, it's bad. The mask got away with the atomic beam machine. He can wipe us out in a second. What? Well, where are you going? Call the nearest flying field, the one on the point. I can be there in eight minutes. Have them warm up a plane. You can't fly. What are you going to yes, do? Yes, I can and I will. So long, Mr. White. I'm not running out on you. Can't wait. It's our wait. only chance and I'm taking it. If you don't hear from me by two minutes of, there's nothing we can do. All alone in the hall. Out of these clothes. No time for opening windows. chance, Mask, but Superman still has time. You can fly, so can I. I'll get to the field and take a plane myself. Faster! Faster! What are you going to do with me? Just sit where you are, my dear Miss Lane, for the time being. What's the clock say, Michael? Five to six. Remove the cover from the atomic beam. Wait a minute. What's that behind us? Too dark to say for sure. Looks like another plane. Fools. Didn't believe me, eh? Well, they soon will. Look down, Michael, and tell me where we are. Over the Daily Planet building. Watch it, Michael. It will not be there long. You beast. You fiend. What are you going to do? Pay off a few scores, Miss Lane. All right, Michael. It works. The machine works. Now then, Michael, back over the Planet building. Any news from Kent? What's the time? Kent hasn't called in so far, Mr. White. Wait a minute. Hey, anybody got a call from Kent? No, nothing here. Not so far, Mr. White. All right, never mind that. What's the time? Why, well, you asked me that just a minute ago. I know I did. What's the time now? Miss Smith, what's the time? Three minutes to six, Mr. White. Three minutes of six. No time left now. There they are. Got to scare them off. All right, Mask. Here I come. Hey, Chief, that other plane's right behind us. Never mind the other plane. It's two minutes of six. Swing down over the Daily Planet building. All right. I got a bank and head back again. Here we go. Please observe, Miss Lane. Once again, the whine of the atomic generators. Oh, stop. You can't mean to do it. You won't. Hey, look, Chief. Get yeah, the plane's right on our tail. I'll take care of that. Come here, Miss Lane. Oh, let me go. I told your friends what would happen if they got in my way now. Michael, release the door. It's open. Just throw the cap. Stop! Stop! I said 
they came too close, I warned them. Come here, girl. No! No! Hey, Chief, watch out! He's going to crash! Too late. Out you go, Miss Lane. Out that door. There. Look out! Look out! Michael, down, down. Dive on the building. I'm throwing the switch on the atomic beam. Look out! Look out! He's right out top! the planes. Jump clear. That'll take care of the mask. The Lord, she's falling. Plunging down 2,000 feet. Got to catch her. Down. Down. 1,500. 1,000. 800. 500. 200. There she is. Now. Now. Ah, got her. She's safe. Now up. Up and away. Whooping down, Superman saves Lois in the nick of time and bears her away to safety. Next morning... In the offices of the Daily Planet. Well, well, Lois, come in, sit down. That was quite an experience you had last night. Uh, I tell you, Mr. White, I don't understand it. They threw me out of the plane, I remember falling. That's all I do remember, clearly. Well, that's almost enough. I imagine we all owe our lives to your friend, Clark Kent. Clark Kent? <laughs> what did he do? Most amazing. At the very last minute, he went up in a plane. Rammed the mask just as he was about to touch off that infernal machine and came down by parachute, just as you did. As I did? Well, I don't remember any parachute. <laughs> you don't think you swam down, do you? I don't know. I'm not sure. It's all very hazy, but at the last minute, I seem to recall that a man appeared out of nowhere, just flying in the air. You probably saw the mask falling out of his plane. Oh, no, this wasn't that kind of a man. He wore a long red cape, and he just took me in his arms and carried me away. Oh, you're dreaming, Lois. Well, well, look who's here. Come in, Cat. Good morning, Mr. White. Good morning, Miss Lane. Oh, good morning. If you'll excuse me, Mr. White. I don't know what Miss Lane has against me. Oh, you mustn't mind her. Kent, I can't thank you enough for what you did. You saved all our lives. Oh, I was just lucky, Mr. White. Crashed the planes and came down by parachute. Oh, by the way, was anything left of the mask's plane? Nothing left of either the plane or the mask. Dr. Dahlgren's machine was ruined, too. Incidentally, he called earlier this morning to thank you and tell you that he's destroyed the duplicate of that machine and the plans for building it. He thought you'd approve. Oh, I do. It was much too dangerous a device in the hands of the wrong person. Oh, uh, say, Kent, uh, there's something been bothering me. Yes? Lois seems to think she was rescued by a man in a red cape, a superman who flew through the air. Now, you remember that Western story you covered? There were rumors about such a man, a red cape, flying through the air... Now, do you oh, think... it's too silly to talk about, Mr. White. I know, but, uh... Hey, Mr. White, about that fire on the Sterling building. Yeah, what about it? I don't know, Kent. Just got a phone call. They think there's a girl trapped on the 20th floor. What? A girl trapped? Can't they get her out? Can't reach her. Mr. White, let me cover that story. Maybe... Maybe what? Well, maybe I... Maybe I can do something. Can I cover it? Sure, but if the fire department can't reach her, what do you think you can do? What does Clark Kent mean to do? Does he intend to assume the blue costume and red cape of Superman and attempt a daring rescue of the trapped girl in broad daylight? Does he dare reveal himself as Superman before the thousands of people watching the fire in the street below? What will happen? Tune in next time and find out. And remember, don't miss the next installment of Superman. Up in the sky. Look, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. All right, welcome back. Um, I had to, uh, um, um, I, I don't know what that's in regards to. Um, Andrea says in the chat room, th some things you can do only uh, the first time, huh? Um, I, uh, uh, I did note, uh, I, did, I did note here the ending, you know, leading into the next plot line. Um, and yeah, this is a very unusual thing for Superman to go up in a plane rather than just, uh, flying up, uh, himself. Uh, but this is during a time when Superman is trying to be as, um, uh, secretive about his identity as possible. Uh, so they're trying to avoid even revealing that there is a Superman. Um, so he flew a plane up. And of course, you, you love that ending, you know, where 
uh, having, you know, ended this current saga with the Yellow Mask, um, you know, it sets the, the stage for the next story uh, about the fire at the Sterling Building. Uh, the funny, the funny thing here, of course, is I, I kind of got a laugh out of that thing where they said, you know, the thousands of people watching the fire. I'm, I'm thinking thousands watching it. Uh, do they have a concession stand out there? Uh, and yeah, uh, Merlin uh, McCarley said he used to only be able to leap in tall bounds, not fly. That came much later. Yeah, that that was one of the 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 one of the the changes. Um, uh, that uh, that did that did come along. Uh, I think flying, for many reasons, made you know a little bit more sense. At least it was a lot cooler. Um, I, well, that's pretty much it. I hope this gets posted for everybody uh, soon. Uh, so please, uh, please uh, check, uh, please uh, check out the uh, uh, magazine once again, lasersword.adamsweb.us. And I thank so much Merlin uh, McCarley and Andrea, and we also had a couple other people come in uh, during the course of the show. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you Sunday, and hopefully all these talk shoe errors will be straightened out by then.